I'm going to do an after action report on the Tamiya 38T Ausführung EF, which is kit number 35369. My apologies, but I didn't even uh, have time to inbox this, but everyone in the world on YouTube has already reviewed and built this thing, so I'm quite late to the party. And I plan on keeping this um, simple because um, I haven't had as much time to make videos and I did squeeze in some time to build this, so I'm at least going to give my two cents on it. Um, I think this could very well be the best model I've ever built or easily like my favorite new recommended starter kit. Like this was built in two days um, and everything was basically perfect. It's crazy how good uh, everything goes together. And I think everybody already knows this, but I mean, I'll point out a couple of things, but there's not a whole lot to say. It's really fast, really good. Um, I even like this silly figure guy, although I don't really paint figures, but he's cool. So the only real issues I had, and I know everybody always thinks I'm weird for having issues with Tamiya stuff, but I figure at least I'll find one because it's kind of like what I do. Um, there's a lot of flat panels with like 45 degree angled um, sprue gates that are sort of off angled. So like the, the panel will have an angle like this and the sprue gate will be like this. And it, they're a little bit hard to get a perfect finish on. They're not hard to clean up by any means, but the plastic is so soft that I actually found myself using these really weird... I have one here. I use primarily this Wilder sander for like the whole thing because it barely does anything, which I always hated about it. But when you're using this like extra soft Tamiya plastic, this actually worked really well. Um, normally I prefer something a little more aggressive, but... And it's not like it's a problem to clean up or build. It's just like... I'm one of those like anal retentive people about like the seams on things before they're painted and I just thought it was a little tough to get like a perfect finish but that's that's looking for problems. Um, the tracks are perfect but if you look at how the track sag is molded the tracks are on upside down or backwards whatever you want to call it just like the Martyr 3. I don't know why Tamiya keeps doing this. I don't care. Um, I find that in wartime pictures you do see backwards tracks. You can reverse the wear if you wore too much on like the interface or, or surface like here where the weight was. You can then flip them around backwards and then you'll have the thicker part back here, kind of like rotating your tires. So I've seen it enough that I don't really care if my models have their tracks on backwards, especially because like if I tried to fix it, um, you can't because it's molded this way. And I haven't heard anybody else mention that, but it's perfect as far as uh, anything else other than like that little um, grumble. Uh, all separate plates for the lower hull. Um, again, there's a million of these build videos and uh, they're all excellent and they all say the same thing, which is that it's excellent. Um, I will say, I don't know, and this is why people watch my stuff, I guess, uh, let's say you've got these the jack mounted here and this big tanker bar here. I have no idea what these are supposed to look like, so I just left them how they were. Um, 38Ts in general don't have the kind of clamps that German tanks had. Uh, later, 38T based vehicles had a modified version of them, but these I don't think had any. So, but this is a, a Barbarossa era one. I don't know what that was, and I don't know what the jack was, so I just. Sometimes I don't care. It's fine. And then I'm going to uh, put a dragon antenna here. So I left the antenna with the post off, and I'm just going to scavenge a, a full antenna. And then other than that, again, the, the figure is perfect. He sits perfectly well there. I'm sure you've seen it everywhere. Um, it's just nuts how cool it is. Um, I don't like this version of 3080. I don't like these boxes. I think they're kind of gaudy but I'm going to do the dragon one, the G that I have, and that doesn't have them. But really, I just wanted to get on here and say something because I haven't put up a video in a while. And mainly that this is like a... If you recall, like all the YouTube videos back in the day would be the, the Tamiya Panzer II F, the Africa Corps one. And that's what they would try to get new people in with all the time. And I don't think that's smart. I think in the future, this would be perfect. Because, man, it just flew through it. And, like, no hiccups, nothing hard to follow. I think the hardest thing would have been, like, the caps on these jerry cans. Um, and, again, the, I'm just nitpicking the, the weird connection points because I feel like I should say something negative. 
Although the last couple of comments I've gotten was like, well, that means you suck. But yeah, I do. And so what? <laughs> um, this thing is freaking awesome. I'm going to be doing it with uh, Mr. Hobby or Mr. Color 513 to test out a different Panzer Gray. Uh, but yeah, that's like all I got. This thing is amazing. And I got it off Facebook Marketplace from some guy for like almost nothing. So uh, what a mojo booster this thing was. So the long overdue Tamiya Martyr 1 uh, after action report, um, I got discouraged mainly because I didn't realize that my primer was X1, not XF1. It's a long story, but that and some stuff with the, um, the Jagdpanzer IV, uh, the, the ugly one. <laughs> um, so I didn't get to this video as soon as I should. I built this thing super fast, like right away. The only things I haven't done would be the ammo and I think the spare tracks are still sitting up on my shelf somewhere. Uh, obviously, I had started to prime it uh, in tandem with the, the Panzer IV 70A, but I just, I thought something was wrong with my airbrush because it was coming on glossy. I'm like, I don't know, and then just never got back to it, but I will. Um, this thing was very nice, very like modern, you know, state of the art Tamiya kind of stuff. Um, the only thing I think I screwed up because I think everybody knows I kind of tend to screw stuff up is I over sanded this axe head But then I just over sanded the other side and I don't know what a French axe head looks like so it looks fine to me um, Yeah, man, uh, the pack 40 is How do I say not as amazing as I thought it would be compared because I'd done the old 70s one on the channel a long time ago and I thought it was kind of really similar on par to their their pack 40 from like a billion years ago so i i was like really looking forward to this gun part it was okay but it wasn't like didn't knock my socks off but it's definitely good enough um there's obviously some pin marks in there you can see right there but as when it's in when it's in those are going to be like folded against here and for me that's okay i don't mind that so much um otherwise the pin marks are not nearly as egregious on the inside there's a few right there, but compared to like their larger vehicles like Nashorn, actually they're pretty bad. I don't think I noticed that as much when I was building it. Um, yeah, but I didn't take care of those on the inside because I didn't. Uh, my apologies, but I didn't see them. I think people might not realize how bad my vision truly is, but I, when I mentioned that in a previous video, like somebody was like, well, I don't know if they were trying to say I shouldn't build models, but I'm going to suffer through my bad vision. And sometimes I mess up seams and things, and I don't care. Um, yeah, this thing is excellent. A little... I don't know how to explain that. It's a little, like, less fly-together than, like, their Vespa or any of their, like, other... Like, Martyr 3s, their other old um, SPs. I'm not sure why. That could have just been a me thing, but it's very good. Um, this was great. Now, these are backwards, as some people pointed out to me. And I was going to try to be a rock star and flip them because their track sag seemed relatively universal, but it does have like a, like a pin and uh, like a keyed spot, but I could have chopped that out and, and just tried, but I wasn't sure. And like, you can look at it yourself. There's a little bit of a, like a rise and a difference. Like this side's a little smaller where this idler is and the sprocket's a little bigger. And I wasn't positive that I'd be able to make it work flipped. So I was like, well, screw it. We'll just do them backwards like the, the Summer Museum was. And like the kit meant them to be. And it's fine. Again, like, just like with the 38T from Tamiya, I don't care. Because other than that, um, they, the sag looks great. They fit really great. Really just exactly how they should be. And to have kit tracks that do that, same goes with this guy from, from Tamiya's 38T. To have them just like nailed, like the shape is perfect, just like if you had magic tracks. That's amazing for me for what you pay for this Tamiya stuff. So uh, I don't care about this. I think I still have these wheels mostly workable. I can like tug this down and these can spin for painting. I don't really like having this like assembly here. Because like you can see there, there's the one I primed. Like you kind of got to get in there if you care and make sure. But um Suspension was cool. It's a, not too bad to do, and again, tracks are awesome. Uh, Pack 40 is cool. I do wish it was, um, they could do their muzzle brakes more like Dragon does, where you have like the front and then this bit and like a one-piece barrel, but they keep doing these like 
one piece barrel with a half a muzzle brake and then a half a muzzle brake and it's a little bit harder to clean up but you know nothing that can't be handled and this thing is adorable um i do really like uh this so you've got a radio and like these connection boxes and conduit that goes right over to where the antenna base is and it's a little bit we this antenna base and i'm not sure if it's like a, a default german anything so i'm a little bit hesitant to put an antenna in there but it's neat to see that level of stuff going on in the interior and by the way these uh these pin marks that i didn't notice they're all um you know coming up not in so they would have been easy to sand had i been able to see them uh yeah but i don't think it's nearly as much of like a fun starter kit as like the 38t is but um, it's very good. I didn't do the figures yet because I've yet to paint any actual figures from all these new Tamiya kits that I think are so neat. I keep speaking highly of them and then not painting them, so that's my bad. Um, but it's it's cool. I'm just a little backlogged on stuff. So that's those. I did them together uh, because why not? And then I have this thing is almost done being done, like painted and weathered and all that. All I have to do is like some dirt on the tracks and then i have to reinstall an antenna but uh we'll treat this as a mini update but i, I do plan on doing like an overall channel update shortly but um i've had lots of stuff going on uh lots of mojo and then back to work with like heavy days so i'll get a video up pretty soon hopefully uh explaining more of that but i try not to ramble on about myself a whole lot but yeah uh, that's what i've been building the last couple days